All right, good evening, everyone. Got a couple minutes there, but we'll go ahead and get started. Can we all please stand as we go ahead and do our evening pledges? All right, we're ready. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. To our Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again. To the American flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You got enough for a choir or you're going to go solo? All right, let's go choir. Well, do you think we, is he going to go ahead and do the baptism? What? They are? Well, let's hold up on the, let's hold up on that then. Uh, so. Okay. Let's hold up just a minute. Hey, Jerry, hold up just a minute. You're going to do the baptism? Okay. Okay. Well, while they're, while they're getting ready, While they're getting ready, we'll go ahead and take up prayer requests real quick. So it's going to be just a few minutes. Do we have any prayer requests tonight? Uh huh. Was that Harold? Okay. Let's start. Amen. Remember the Harold Goodman family. Anyone else, please? Amen, yes. Amen. It's good to see you all back out here again tonight. It's always a pleasure seeing, you know, people that's, unfortunately, we know that there's sickness at home, but, but when God gives you the opportunity, it's good to see you. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Let's remember Sister Robin and her family and all of her requests. All right. Anyone else? Amen. Amen. I'm sorry? We can here in just a second, yes. As soon as we get done with this right here. That's all right. Any, anybody else have a request? All right. Let's go ahead and come on in. We'll have a, a prayer real quick, and then uh, we'll take up the offering for you.
bless them, Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord.
shackled by a heavy burden neath the load of guilt and shame then the hand of Jesus touched me and now I'm no longer the same he touched me oh he touched me and all oh, the joy that floods my soul something happened and now I know he touched me and made Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while he turns. touched me oh he touched me and all oh, the joy that floods my soul something happened and now I know he touched me and made baptism to go ahead and get started who has a special song on their heart hey man yeah 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 <laughs> his holy spirit's here brother hey man praise the lord praise the lord he said to wait. He said, we're going to go ahead and take, do one song at a time. Can, can you hear me? I'll let you know here in just a minute, Jerry. day in victory because of the one who lives in me I found every promise he ever made Jesus will keep walk by my side in deserts dry love me and help me when I cry so let me sing you one more song in case I leave I know how I made it I made it by God's amazing grace steps that are slower now have taken each one by faith standing on Jordan stormy shore I lift my trembling voice once more I know how I made it I made it by God's amazing grace God's children are leading one by one passing this way and going home signs of the time reveal we don't have very long but each one who stands upon this shore waving goodbye as they rejoice 
Glory to God, we'll live here singing that same sweet song. I know how I made it, I made it by God's amazing grace. Steps that are slow, now I've taken each one by faith. Standing on Jordan's stormy shore, I lift my trembling voice once more. I know how I made it. I made it by God's amazing grace. this evening and yeah. another baptizing. Yes, man. It's been Amen. just a little bit off the script, but that's just fine with me. That's fine. Thank God. I want you to know I'm so proud of this man that I'm about to baptize, and he is my friend, and I love him dearly. Amen. 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 I am so glad that the Lord brought him and Carrie to this church. Yes. Amen. Amen. In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith, I baptize this, my brother, yes. in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. All right, will the choir come up, please?
Amen. As the choir comes down, let's all please stand and let's fellowship one more time. Amen. I tell you, the sweet spirit is so powerful here tonight. Amen. Brother Hunter, I'm so proud of you, brother. I tell you what, I, the spirit of God is just moving so freely. And as I said, if God tells you to jump and run, you just get up and do what God tells you to do. Amen. <laughs> I know that the spirit is, like I said, it's, it's very powerful. Praise God. May I have the men up for the evening offering, please? <laughs> he was just getting comfortable, Brian. Go ahead, Jerry. I'll have you say the blessing, please. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sister Dolores, you have a song tonight? Do y'all have any more songs tonight? You and Courtney, you have any more? Joyce, do you have a song tonight?
we haven't practiced this song. I haven't practiced this song. I hadn't heard this in a long time, and it came to my mind a few days ago when I listened to it a couple times, and Bobby preached on the potter and the clay this morning, and I thought, well, maybe that we need to try this. <laughs> You've been my life for so long. You were right when I was wrong. I can't repay all the love you've given me. You were my friend when no one cared. I was alone, but you were there. Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I owe it all to you, Lord. All I have is you, Lord. Take my life and make it what you have me be. For I'm your child and you're my father. I'm the clay and you're the potter. Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Borrowed treasures, borrowed dreams, all life's joys you've given me. When trouble comes, you're always there to make me smile. So come what may, thy will be done. I love you, Jesus, God's only son. Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I owe it all to you, Lord. All I have is you, Lord. So take my life and make it what you'd have it be. For I'm your child and you're my father. I'm the clay and you're the potter. Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. If there ever was such a thing as an unplanned day, today has been it. Thank God for it. It has been one of the best days of my entire life. I have so enjoyed, just like today, salvations, two baptisms, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. Keys locked up in the car. Fishing poles stuck through the windows. You'll never figure this church out. If anybody asks me what kind of a church you got, I say, I have no idea. <laughs> How many did you have? We had just enough that God showed up Amen. to be a part of it. And that's all that matters. Amen. 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 Y'all stand to your feet. Jeremiah chapter number 18, verses 3 and 4. We will pick up where we left off this morning. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Fathers, we bow before you. God, thank you so much for everything that you've done today. Lord, I pray that you would search hearts again this night. Lord, you know the lost from the saved. You know the very day, the hour, the second, the time, and the place that that one's going to get saved. God, if it's tonight, may they be obedient to your will in their life. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for what you've done. Yeah. We thank you for what you're going to do. Yeah. And Lord, we ask for the power of God upon this message, for the words to say, clarity of thought and discernment. Search our hearts here this night. We'll be so very careful to give you all the praise, the honor, the glory for it. Christ Jesus, precious, holy, saving, and healing name we do pray. And amen. I began uh, verse number three this morning, preached down. He went to the potter's house. One person went to the potter's house and he observed. 
He didn't intervene. He didn't change his mind. He didn't tell him how. He just simply observed the potter at work. Have y'all got it yet? Today we observe the potter at work. We saw what God does when you step out of the way and let God be God. He saves when he's ready. He saves when it's the right time. When and where and how, it's all him. So Jeremiah, he looks at the potter. He said, I saw him work. No influence from anyone except in the, from the potter. And I saw him do something very unusual. He had a piece of clay that he had been working on. And he found something wrong with it. Now the Bible doesn't say specifically if the potter caused it. Or if he just worked it to the point that it just came out. I'm on the side, I'm believing that he worked it and he worked it until he found because he doesn't never quit until it's just right and he refused to quit that vessel until he found something. But the Bible says that it was marred. It don't tell us what the mar was. But he done this right here. He kept the material, but he began to make another vessel out of the same material. Would another vessel be less significant in the eyes and the hands of the potter, or would it be just as significant as the one he began? Because you understand the potter saw something, but when he got the mar out of it, he saw something greater in the same material, and says, I believe I'll change it for the better. Do you understand, only God knows our life. He only knows our footsteps. He only knows our decisions. He only knows what we're going to accomplish in our life. And there are times where the potter changes direction of our life to send us to something greater. We'll start out doing something good, won't we? We'll serve God, and any way you serve God is good. But you understand, He has a plan for every vessel out here, and His plan is great. We're just good. And so he began to, to, and the Bible doesn't say that he created a second vessel exactly like the first. The Bible don't tell us that. But we do know this second attempt, he kept that vessel. He didn't find anything wrong with it. He didn't quit manufacturing and working on it. He kept his hands on that till it became his vessel made exactly like he wanted it. We are that second vessel when we get saved. There's plenty wrong with us before we get saved. And you see, Hunter became that second vessel in the hands of the potter tonight. But I need to pick up and get a couple things out here. How long did he work on it? I don't know. But do you know what a vessel's created for? It only has one purpose. That's to hold something. That is so that he creates you sturdy enough and empty. You realize we're empty, right? We don't bring nothing to the table. We're there so the potter can make us so that we can receive something from something else. And then we have value when we're filled with something. An empty vessel's got no value, it takes up space. An empty vessel has no use, it gathers dust. But put something that means something to you and put it in the care of that vessel, and if you didn't trust the vessel, you wouldn't put what you've worked your hard-earned money for to put up in there so it can keep it. Is that not what a vessel does? Open your kitchen cabinets. We got all kinds of vessels. Most of them are locking locks. Unless you're like me and it's Cool Whip bowls and butter bowls. Thank God for Cool Whip. But we keep the vessel until there's something that we choose to put in it that means something to us. That means it's something you don't want to throw away. If you got a vessel you're not willing to throw away because you keep it because you've got something that you want to keep. If it's leftovers, thank God it's already bought, paid for, put it in the microwave and eat it again. It could be anything. It could be heirlooms. It could be just nuts and bolts. 
But it's always something that we want to keep, and we got to have somewhere to put it. And so we choose a vessel. May I say to you that God created vessels. Were we not, before we got saved, an empty vessel that needed filled? We're walking around living life, and God's just waiting on that moment like Hunter had tonight. He's waiting on that moment till you come to the crossroads, and he stands right there at the door of the knock, and then you want to know why Hunter was created? Because God met him at the crossroads at Mountain View Independent Baptist Church on a Sunday night, and the devil couldn't stop it. Nobody saw it coming. That's what he created Hunter for, was to get saved tonight. Woo, glory. And that's what, can you remember the day you got saved? That's why you were created. And after a, after a vessel is created and then it's filled with what the owner wants to put in it, then it becomes his because it holds so it belongs to him. Guess what Hunter's full of tonight? Amen. God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tim, got saved last week. Got Amen. God the Holy Spirit. Amen. You and I that are saved. We're God's vessels despite what size we are. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. We're of value to God. Amen. Because He loved us enough to create us for the sole purpose of filling us with the Holy Spirit. Are, are the very blood veins and arteries in us not to be filled? Ain't that what they're created for? They're filled with blood. The life is the blood. And the blood is the life. God, when before Adam became a living soul, before he breathed, he was a pile of dirt. He just simply gathered up and he had everything except life in him. Let me tell you, old Hunter and old Tim and the rest of us that are saved, we did not begin to live until that crossroads one day. It's like Paul on the road to Damascus. Thank God for that road. Forget about Damascus, but thank God for the road. And Jesus was waiting on him to get to just to the right spot and that light began to shine and that voice began to speak, and the next thing you know, he's went from Saul to Paul, and bless God, he's saved, and he's writing books of the Bible, and he's preaching worldwide missions, and bless God, he's got a use for him. I don't know what God has for you in your life, but if you've been filled with his spirit, he will use you for his glory. Amen. So you see, the very reason that a vessel was ever created was so that somebody could put something in it of value. If he didn't have an image in his mind and a use, he would have thrown that clay away. What I'm trying to tell you is you got saved that and you reason you got saved is because God had his hand upon you. He has a purpose for your life. He has a reason for saving you. And if you'll just surrender your life to him, he'll do something great with you and through you. Amen. You and I were of use to nobody till we got saved. But now we're into the hands of the great master. And he sits on the right hand of the father. And he looks down and he's what he sees are vessels. And he's just waiting on you and me. Do you want to know why church is so important? Why prayer is important? Why Bible study is important? Because as we are being used on a daily basis, we begin to dwindle and dwindle and dwindle. And somewhere or another, dear friend, we got to get filled back up again. And somewhere they ain't but one fountain. They ain't but one source. And that's the grace and the throne of Almighty God and the, and the throne of grace. And God said, oh, Bobby's getting just a little bit low. He's been using it up. He's been fighting with the devil. He's been dealing with the world. He's been preaching to a church. He's been taking care of this. And he looks like he's just he's getting just a little low. And God looked down at his father and said, watch this. I'm about to fill him up. And I don't know about you, church, but bless God, my vessels got full today. Thank God for salvation. Thank God for baptism. Thank God for you tonight. And mostly thank God for God. You see, it's things like this that God fills our vessels vessels back up again. He knows what to do. He knows what we need. He knows when we need it. He knows what to put inside of us. God will never 
Let his vessels run empty if you'll just go to church. Amen. And you see, we're filled with the Holy Spirit because marred means it was corrupt. Can I just say this? And I need to preach on this for just a minute if I can. Y'all remember, let me get my breath. You have no idea how many stairs is between me and that baptistry. Did I ever tell you how old I am? Almost a hundred. Do y'all know the prodigal son? The story of the prodigal son. Boy, they wrote him off, did they not? He's in a far country. He shamed a family name. He shamed his Savior. He shamed his church. He's in open and willful sin in a far country. And when all the time the money run out, the good time run out, the friends run out, and there was never no love in a far country. He came to himself one day and he said, I've sinned before heaven and I've sinned against my father. I just need to be a servant. Being a servant at my daddy's house is better than being the king of this hoglot. And he began with the help of God to make his way. And daddy saw him at the gate as he came up the big long driveway. He's naked. He's skinny. He's filthy. His hair's all grown out in a bush and he ain't had a comb or a mirror. It looked like he ain't had a bath in a year. But there's something about the form of that boy that that daddy recognized. He came up the driveway and he didn't even get a chance to get to the house. That daddy could have said, get out of here, you're a scoundrel. I don't want nothing else to do with you. But there's something about that daddy that looked past the dirt, looked past the mess, looked past the hog lot, looked past the sin, looked past the shame, looked past the scars, and he saw something on the inside of that. May I tell you that our Heavenly Father, He looks past our mistakes. He looks past our wrongs. He looks past our sin. He sees on the inside what only the potter can see. And He looks on the inside. He said, I know what His problem is. It ain't the sin that was in His life. It's not the past that he was once in he's empty and what he needs is to be filled up do you know what the father did he said I need a coat I need a robe I need shoes I need a ring it's my son has come back you want to know why he put a robe on that boy and it was the father that put the robe on it because nobody knew about his scars nobody knew about that dirt and as long as he was covered by the robe nobody else could see the father covered the sin the father covered the scars and he lived the rest of his life as a son my son was dead but he's alive he's lost but now that he's found he put a cloak on him because you want to know something sometimes God doesn't have to break you to remake you sometimes all he has to do is put a little coat of paint on you sometimes all you need is to just to be filled Because you see, the scars don't bother God. He's got his own. Your past ain't nothing because it's under the blood. What everybody else's opinion of you, it don't matter to him because you're his vessel. Nobody else's. And as soon as his daddy put that on there, he covered up his scars, his past, and his sin. And the older brother may not have agreed with it, but he said, it ain't up to the older brothers, it's up to the fathers. And the father said, that's my boy. All he needed. He was always my vessel. He was always mine. He just had to get something that was on the inside of him, out of him, so that I could fill him up with what I wanted him to have on the inside. Sometimes we get our life in a mess, and God lets us ruin it so that we'll empty the world out of us and fill us up with what God has for our life. So you see, don't you be ashamed of your past. That's simply God allowing you to empty out the mess in your life so that you can be filled with the thing God has for you. So the prodigal is a great example of a vessel that they tried to put the wrong stuff in because you understand God don't allow the devil's junk to be in his vessels. He'll let it run its course. And people look at you and say, yeah, I see that vessel. It used to belong to that guy up there that made it. And then you kind of see where it's going, what it's done. 
But don't you understand something? Because he did not throw the clay away, that will forever be his vessel. You may fill it up with the junk of this world, but it will empty out. If God has to grab you and turn your life inside out and upside down to empty you a little quicker, he'll do it. Let me preach on before I give all the way out. Because you see, the clay was his material, right? And how many body, how many, how does everybody know that nobody else touches God's clay? Is it a hands off? So he made it again another vessel. He went from imperfect to perfect. Water could be oil. I don't know what he put in it. You never find where Jeremiah told the potter how to fix it, do you? He got the mar out of it. Because he knew the integrity of it. So he goes to this. The potter touched the clay, and only the potter. But he touched it again. Let me ask you something. Have you ever attempted to fix something and it just wasn't working? So you took a step back, got a fresh look at it, and tried it from another angle? If you're like me and Jerry, (laughs) remodeling a bathroom, I don't know how many times we redid that one thing. But we got it right, didn't we? And the reason I know we got it right is because my wife didn't move me out of the house and into the house with him. So I know I'm good. Thank you, Jesus. The potter touched the clay again. You know what that is? That's God giving us a brand new beginning all over again. How many in this church thanks God for a new beginning? Do you understand? There was something about the first attempt that he just was not satisfied with. So he said, I'm going to remake the vessel. Maybe you're not an oil vessel. You're a flower vessel. Maybe you're made to hold something even sturdier than that. And so he remade you the second time, as he did me. Whether it's the same vessel or whether it's a vessel in his image, his design again. Even, let me get this out, write this down if you you take notes. Even when the clay was marred, when it was not fit to be used, when he refused to send it out the door as his vessel, we were still not his waste. Do you understand you and I ain't garbage? We just ain't been where God wants us to be yet. The clay wasn't waste. He would have thrown waste away, would he not? But God said it just needs and just needs that out of it, and then now he's all good. Let me just preach a little bit more. Still in his image and his design, are we not? Because what he did by getting the mar out of it, was remove the weakness. Can I ask you this right here? Is there any grown-ups in this church tonight, you got a weakness? Huh? Does God not work with you on a daily basis to try to get that weakness out of you and make you stronger? Because you're still trying means God's still working with you. You see, when we get raptured out, thank God all the weaknesses will be gone. Can I ask you this time right here? Did you ever think, and I just had this thought just a few minutes ago, Did you ever think, did you ever believe that because of a decision you made in your past that you were beyond repair? Did you ever think you'd went so far not even God can fix you? 
Do you ever think that you had already become so corrupted your vessel has, there ain't no way God would ever put his hand, his name, or his product in you? But look at where you're at tonight. You see, your flesh and the devil's told you a bunch of lies. God doesn't throw it away. We're not his waste. He just fixes what's broke. Let me finish it up because I am give out. You know my, up where my son goes to church, their baptistry's higher than that one is. It's up there about the top. Does their preacher climb stairs? No, he does not. They put him an elevator in. Where's my elevator? No, I want an elevator. You know what they'll get? They'll build something up there and give me a stepladder. He has seemed good to the potter to make it. When it was what everybody would consider waste, when he found something wrong with it, when he stopped and just took a look at it, he still saw something good in it. If nobody else sees anything good in you and me, I want you to understand our potter does. You can't get so bad and so wrong and so out of the way that he ain't never going to, he's going to wash his head. He'll never do that. He'll always see the good. Like grandmamas. It takes a lot to get a grandmama mad at you, don't it? You can be 68 years old and a rascal, and that's my baby. You leave him alone. Am I telling the truth? Thank you, Jesus, for grandmas. As seen to the potter to make it. The now, the, now the potter could do something he could not do before. He could put his vessel on display. Let me tell you something. Just because he sells that to somebody else and it goes to a distributor and it goes to somebody that somebody else buys it from, that ain't their vessel. They didn't make it. They didn't create it. They didn't design it. It's the potter will forever be his vessel. Amen. No matter what you do, you're still going to be the potter's vessel. You see, one day, the potter's going to put us on display. It's not down here. What we are is an example to those that they could have the same potter we've got. We're still a work in progress. The high gold standard is going to be when he presents us to his heavenly father because it's got to be sinless and perfect without spot or blemish. God's going to take this little skinny preacher that got dressed tonight without his glasses on. He put blue suspenders with a black suit. Put my glasses on, they didn't match. He's going to present me one day to his heavenly Father. And he's going to say, Father, and we can call him Daddy, but the Bible right to do so. And he's not going to present me as a preacher, nor a pastor, nor a husband, nor a father, nor a grandfather, nor a truck driver, or an ex-railroad worker. He's going to put that nail-scarred hand around me. He said, Father, this is my vessel. He's my creation. Amen. You gave him to me. There ain't nothing down here that I could ever do that would earn my right to be in front of our Heavenly Father in heaven, but because of what he did. I belong to him and now he can put me on the showroom of heaven with streets of gold, angels everywhere. I mean diamonds is a wallpaper, 12 foundations, angels everywhere we look and say that was my creation. I did that. I made him. And thank God one day he said that's my pattern because here's what happens. Number one, we're formed in his mind, are we not? We're created by His hand. We are given life by His breath. We're in His pattern, His likeness, and His image, are we not? 
And in the showroom, oh my God. You see, we are shaped as his design to be used for his purpose. Amen. You see, we ain't one cut it, cookie cutter vessel. God creates us unique. He can tell us apart from the throne of grace. He said, that's why I created him. But he's growing up, and my mama had to spill the beans this morning. She talked to Patsy and Vernon back yonder forever, and I don't know what she told them, but I'm pretty sure it was all about me. But when I was born and growing up, they ain't one person would have said, I believe God's going to make a preacher out of him. It wasn't until I was grown, married with kids, God said, I'm going to make a preacher out of you. And he began to show me why he created me the way that I am. Because I can't play basketball, I can't play football, I can't wrestle, I ain't smart enough to be anywhere, but I can preach. Which means I simply take a Bible and I just until I'm tired. I'm saying, what can God do with a 160-pound man? He said, he can let you preach. And I'm thinking about all the things in America that I could be doing or I could have done or done with my life, and I have to stop. And I say, thank you, Jesus, for calling me into the ministry. Because if there was anything I ever did that I ain't ashamed of, it's preaching. I've tried this, that, and other. I've made a lot of mistakes, but surrendering to the call of the ministry was never wrong. I say, thank you, Jesus. He'll not present me as one of the greatest preachers, and there'll be no accolades. It'll be, look at my vessel, Father. Ain't he something? And I'll be something because I'm his creation. And so will you. Ain't it going to be good? That you can live eternity being his vessel in the midst of the highest standard in the universe and never have to be ashamed again. That's when the potter creates the vessel. Let me, I'm about done. You see, there's a lot of different vessels for different uses, right? But they ain't but one potter. So let me ask you something. You ever tried to use a vessel for the wrong thing? Well, the New Testament says this. If you try to put new wine in an old skin, it won't hang. It'll bust it wide open. But whatever God created us to be filled with, it'll work perfect every time. You want to know something you can't do that you found out the hard way? You cannot put hot grease in a styrofoam cup. (laughs) Only the potter chooses the vessel. Only the potter sees the use for the vessel. Only the potter ever touches the vessel. Only the potter molds the vessel. I'm going to tell you something right now. This business of teaching our kids and our grandkids and people that it's this world that molds them, it is absolutely not. It's the hand of the potter that molds us how he wants us to be. Quit listening to the world. Quit listening to the experts. And listen to the voice of Almighty God. He created you. And he done so perfectly. But only the potter can see to touch, to choose. And only the potter turns the clay. Because you see, there's an unseen work going on at the potter's wheel. You remember me telling you this morning that he said he had two wheels? Y'all paying attention when I read the scripture? You see, we all see, or Jeremiah, I'm going to say we all, through Jeremiah's eyes. He all saw the turntable going around with the clay on it. He saw the, the what, he saw that the, Potter saw the mar, got the mar out of it, recreated the vessel a second time. But let me tell you something that you don't see. Nobody sees. Only the potter knows it's going. There's a wheel on the bottom that's underneath the round wheel that lays flat that turns this way. His foot is on it. And his foot determines how fast it spins. His foot determines how long it spins. 
His foot determines on how high, at what speed. His foot determines what he's going to do with his hands. You never see it. Do y'all know of a man in the Old Testament named Mephibosheth? That familiar? Well, I tell you for the bewildered looks. He is the grandson of King Saul. King Saul, you know, God, he saw the witch. God took the kingdom away from him. You know, the second king was a king named David, right? Do you know what the incoming king did with all the relatives, the kinfolk of the predecessor king, previous king? They killed them all. There was no bloodline. Mephibosheth is in Lodibar. He was crippled and never really walked because his nurse ran with him and fell as the kingdom was falling. David said, is there anybody left from the house of Saul? One of his servants said, I've been keeping touch with Mephibosheth. He's in Lodibar. Lodibar means a place of barren waste. Nothing. He was staying, trying to stay alive, living in a desert waste, just hoping not to die. One day the king's chariot rolls up with the horses and soldiers, and he says, I've had it now. The big guards come in and they bust open the door and they said, Mephibosheth, the king wants to see you. The guards carry him out to the chariot and they take him back to where King David is. King David brings him in and he says, I want to show you goodness. I'm not going to kill you. Jonathan was my best friend. And you see, for Jonathan's sake, I'm just going to be good to you. Now the Bible says, and let me leap ahead a minute, the Bible says that he ate at the king's table. But you see, David had a table full of sons. They'd all gather up at supper time and come to the king's table, and they'd walk in, they'd sit down, take up their rightful place, and every once in a while you'd hear, What was that sound? That's the lame feet of a man that thought he'd never, never see the inside of a castle, never see the inside or see the king's table. There's something different about him trying to limp to the table. But you want to know what? As soon as he sat down in that chair and scooted up under that tablecloth and that tablecloth, bless God, covered his infirmity. He was just like all the other sons of David. You couldn't tell there was anything ever wrong with him. What I'm telling you is this. We might have flaws, bless God, on this side. But when the glory of God covers us, amen, and bless God, we sit at the table of the king, we've got no Mars. And you see, that's what, when God empties us out and fills us up, that's the difference in being his vessel. That's when he begins to fill us up. And the Bible says Mephibosheth ate at the king's table as one of the king's sons for the rest of his life. Do you understand what it is when the, when the potter remakes us? When the potter shines us? You know, they take those pots and they wouldn't take them out dull. They would shine those things until they glowed. And you see, that's what God does with us. He hides the scars as only he can see. He puts the mistakes behind it. He covers those up because they've been forgiven. Amen. And you see, that vessel... He sets it up there. And nobody but nobody but nobody but nobody except that potter knows what that vessel's been through. We might look shiny on the outside just like we were brand new, but he has no idea except the potter what that vessel's went through just to hold whatever the potter decides to put in it. Ain't that you and me? There's some people that are sitting in this church that I'm sure from time to time that's had a lot of hard licks in their life. Disappointments, setbacks, unfair things happen to you. But when God begins to bless in the church service, you can't tell that anything's ever been wrong. 
You see, that's the potter just reaching down with them nail-scarred hands, and he just shines you, and he rubs you, and he just takes a hold of you, and he just loves on you. And is when the potter puts his hands back on a vessel, that's all anybody ever needs to know is that the potter's got his hands on that vessel. Amen. Kathy, come to the piano, if you would, please. What I'm telling you tonight, I don't know how you feel. I don't know what you're going through. But if you just want the potter just to, to feel that potter's touch tonight, if you just simply want to come down and let him fill you with something, that's why we have an altar. That's why we're here tonight. If you're here and you've never been saved, you don't even have to think about it. You just have come to this altar. And we'll, we'll pray with you and get you right through it. You just need to know you need a Savior, and his name is Jesus Christ. Where'd it go? Carrie, would you understand? All right, anybody got anything on their mind or their heart?
clue what's happening. And today I've not had a clue. Anybody else? I like that quote of said this morning. We all need to put ourselves in that, in that quote. Whoops. I'm nothing special, but Jesus thought I was to die for Amen. Amen. Man, that's, that's big. And that comes from a man that can't remember nothing. He's quoted that to me all week. <laughs> Boy, we miss Virginia when she ain't here, don't we? Yes, Man, we're down to little Debbie cakes when she's not here. <laughs> also, remember, 6.30, the youth will meet. 7 o'clock, we'll have Bible study. We'll finish up on the 10th plague, and then we got a surprise for everybody. I ain't telling you what it is. It's for a surprise. All right, we're going to ask Danny to dismiss us with prayer, and then we're going to get the young ones up here. Turn y'all loose. Wait a minute. We got, they're coming. Just slow down. Now we're ready. And they lifted holy hands towards heavens and they shouted. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen.